know what you're observing here with that right front tire is a redneck, redneck version of uh, breaking down a tire that, uh, that's gone flat. It literally blew as we pull into the power pile of scrap iron. Trip number two. Well, it's looking like our redneck fire removal technique worked. We really just wanted to break the bead down, but um, it's okay. We threw it off the rim, that's fine. Makes the job that much more easy. Hey, good morning everyone, it's Tractor Man 44 here. I guess you can tell by the surroundings I'm over at my much older brother's house and we're over here attacking his uh, scrap pile to see what uh, kind of material we can get to build uh, 
a light duty trailer frame for that OS27 Frontier sawmill, uh, bandsaw sawmill. And we went ahead and pulled them off of the pile and got them out here. There's a little bit of damage on a couple of them, but that's the thing about uh, guys like us that have a tendency to build things out of uh, all recycled material. You know, we got to work with what we have and uh, make do with what we have and, and, and correct things that are some imperfections, so to speak, and uh, make it to where it's acceptable, you know, for, for what it is that we're doing. So, uh, yeah, we're going to bind this down and I'm going to head back to my shop and unload the stuff. Well, I made it home with the bar joist and the axle. I already unloaded one of the bar joists. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you guys exactly how I transport something that's extremely long and ungainly with a small tractor in a tight place. Uh, this ain't for everybody, you know. It's just what we do. Hopefully it won't pinch my fingers and make any blood fly. First off, these things are 23 foot long in webbing. Uh, then I've got you guys a couple of foot of tailpiece on the end here. So we're looking at something that's 24, 25, 20, about 25 foot in length. What we got to do is we got to find our balance point. There's close enough to our balance point right there. So now we see the spot that's our balance point. We're going to pull it out here beside the bucket. Right alongside the bucket, we're going to take our choker, our choker of choice. Shorten it up a little bit. Now bear in mind this is a little tractor, this little uh, B3030 Kubota. Well, here we are, fellas. We got the majority of the raw material here now to uh, begin the process of straightening up, cleaning up, whatever, and fabricating a light-duty trailer frame for that uh, for that OS27 Frontier. Don't be concerned about the little bit of bends and everything on the ends. These are uh, 23 feet of webbing, and I need 22 foot for the actual trailer deck. I may have to take a bad spot out of one of them. I'm only going to use two of them. The two best ones. The third one is entirely far material if I have to cut it up in order to cut out a bad spot or extend either one of the other two for the actual frame. So now we're going to go and take a look and see what I'm going to be using, not necessarily as a pattern, but for ideas on how to do this. What you're looking at here is a an A14 Foley bell saw circle mill. Uh, come from the factory with a 40 inch circular blade on it. That's been long gone. I've been running a 50 inch diameter inserted tooth blade on it for the length of time that I've had it. We just saw a little red cedar just uh, just literally uh, first week of June, I think it was. A buddy of mine was in from out of town, a YouTube buddy. But at any rate, I've got the blade off of it right now. It's sitting in the shop. You'll see it uh, eventually. And uh, this is the impetus behind deciding to use bar joists for the framework of the trailer on that um, OS 27. So I'm going to take a look and see how they've got it braced and everything like that. And then uh, try to do what I can to come close to duplicating something at least as stable as what this one is here. This is the actual frame itself. It's got the tongue built onto it up here on the right hand side over here by the tractor. Uh, it's partially hidden there. And all you do is set a axle underneath it. 
uh, strap the axle to it, bolt it to it, weld it to it, whatever, and it becomes mobile in and of itself. So that's not that much different than what I want to do with the uh, with the bandsaw. Well, now that you can see the basic material list here, and you see what my intentions are by looking at the old Foley bell saw uh, circular mill. All I got to do now is pin our ears back, dig in, and start uh, start making something out of this industrial waste. Like I tell you, if you read the uh, what my channel's about. Primarily what uh, what myself and my much older brother do. Uh, it's not that we're cheapskates. It's just that we're we hate to see things go to waste. The vast majority of our projects are built in entirely out of, or a great percentage of them are built out of uh, mostly salvage material, material that would normally just go just go to the waste hoppers, uh, trash hoppers, um, and all that stuff. So it's never easy, as you can tell by looking at these bar joints. It'll be so much easier just to run over to the lumber yard or over to the steel yard and buy all new material. Oh, that would be a godsend. There's nothing like working with fresh, brand new steel. But unfortunately, that's not what we do. We just kind of like to make do with what we have and make it as nice as we possibly can make it. So that having been said, this is Trackman44, and I am out of here, guys.